You're listening to Poppin' Bottles with Bottle Caps. Opening the lid on the liquor industry. All right, welcome to Poppin' Bottles with Bottle Caps. I'm your host today, Tyler Kern. And joining me in the Market Scale studios is Dr. Prashant. Hello, Dr. Prashant. How are you today? Fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Corey Gerstner as well. Corey, thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. And Bish Mubarak. Bish, thank you so much for being here as well. Thanks for having us. Guys, uh, tell me a little bit about Bottle Caps. What is the, uh, what's the purpose of it, and how did you develop uh, this app, and what does it do? So Bottle Caps is the largest, um, largest branded uh, app for liquor stores in the United States. The, the genesis of the product came from an idea with one of our partners who was already in the liquor space. And what he was uh, envisioning was an opportunity to bring alcohol, uh, both the experience and delivery to the home, rather than um, being able to uh, just shop the store uh, in a brick and mortar fashion, being able to actually, um, you know, go the digital revolution route. That's really interesting. So was this a an opportunity that you just saw this there's this space in the market where nothing existed and you said hey you know what we think we can fill this space pretty well so alcohol as you know is a really antiquated space yes right um if you walk into an alcohol store today you see lots of neon lots of bright colors and still stickers that have pricing and in a world where we click and buy uh you know we have revolutionized that process now and we have done that in a, in a mechanism that is very efficient very uh, transparent and allows a, uh, a a user to experience not only just the ability to buy, but the ability to look at recipes and all these beautiful things that you know are part of the buying experience. Um, for the store owner, it's it's great in, in that they continue to engage a customer and have an experience outside the store, right? That's I think even more important. And and when I would equate it to uh, looking at it as an Amazon type opportunity where uh, you know, who would have envisioned five or ten years ago that you could have bought anything you wanted to with a click of a button? Right. And you can do that today. And we've done that in the liquor space. A lot of these store owners think <clears throat> because they have a website that they're technologically advanced, that they're there. You know, and ten years ago, most of them probably didn't have a website. And then they got one. And it doesn't really do anything. It's just a static thing that sits there. Uh, and then the other side of it is all, you know, all these millennials, all these kids that grew up with uh, clicking apps and everything else are now 21 and are looking to buy liquor. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to have to do it the way they want to do it, which is through apps. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've kind of developed an entire platform of products too, which we'll talk about some, but it's not just the app. Uh, we also do websites. We do other uh, e-commerce type products as well. The point is, as Bish alluded to, these millennials, they've grown up in this space. This is how they interact with any retailer uh, in any industry. So convenience and then adding that experience to the mix is what these liquor stores are attempting to do, and we're the company that's helping them do it. Absolutely. So that's fantastic to me, and I think I have a lot of questions about that and just things that we can dive into. But first, let's get into some fun questions. I mean, you guys are a fun company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I loved your website and getting just to browse around and kind of look at all the stuff you have there. So let's dive in. Let's have a little fun. Uh, Corey, let's start with you and go around. So let's let's have some fun here. What is your favorite adult beverage? Favorite adult beverage? I think it may be on the website, so this could be something you can look up. But <laughs> I, I said beer, and then I, uh, I guess, uh, summarized free beer. Oh, yeah. would probably be my absolute favorite. I mean, anything free, right? Right. Yeah. Right. It's hard to beat that. Do you have a favorite of of the free beer? Like if you can have any free beer. Um, probably any any light beer that's that's cheap as well. All right. So we'll go the next route. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Bish, what about you, man? Oh, you know, when I when I drink, it's probably Tito's and Diet Coke because the sugar makes me crazy. So I keep the sugar out of there. All right. I do that. I would say uh, my new favorite is the Old Fashioned. It's mm. very cool and it's very classy. Yeah, you feel like Don Draper when you drink it. Yeah, right? like, yeah, absolutely. And I, it's like my go-to now. Yeah, I drank one and I was hooked. Do you have a particular bourbon or whiskey that you like to have it made with, or is it just you know you got your bartender and they know the they know the stuff? Uh, typically, I like uh, Blantons or uh, and some of those are harder to get, but the makers are the Blantons. Absolutely, I'm into that. I'm into that. I like your style, Doctor P. All right, next question, uh, just for some fun. Uh, what's the worst drink you've ever consumed? 
And you don't have to bag on a particular company, you know. I'll start here. No companies. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a group of pretty unique individuals at the workplace, and they <laughs> like to concoct and come up with their own drinks. Oh, and yeah. uh, so we had some Coronas at one point in the fridge. We also had um, some Fireball, you know, which is cinnamon whiskey in the fridge. <laughs> and uh, I'll mention his name. Uh, Nick, who is in our client service team, decided he was going to make uh, what he called the – uh, Mexican car fire. Oh, no. So it was the old drop a shot of fireball into a Corona glass and chug. I don't have to tell you what happened, but it was certainly a car fire. And uh, everyone looked, as they do with car fires. But it was probably the worst thing I've ever seen and or tasted. Sounds terrible. <laughs> You know, <clears throat> there's a uh, there's a drink that I, I think a lot of people actually drink this and, and like it. Uh, if you've ever heard of Clamato uh, juice, it's like uh, – Think of it kind of like a Bloody Mary mix but with clam in it. And it's very popular in Canada and, and I think in parts of Europe. But uh, Canadians mix it with beer. And I've tried it. I think it's terrible. It tastes ah, – why would you want clam and tomato in your beer? But it's a huge drink to mix the Clamato in with the, with the beer in Canada. So. I'd love to be there in that first conversation <laughs> of like, you know what? This beer is good, but you know what? We take it to the next we level. We really need <laughs> we some, some clam clams. juice in here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dr. P, what about you? So I've uh, – one of our partners, uh, he's our CIO, Mitch, and I have spent a lot of time at bars together. We're kind of grown up together. And he loves doing shots and, uh, you know, every decade I'll I'll blow a blood vessel in my eye. <laughs> uh, and, and it's for only certain people to watch. Um, but I, he had me do a shot one night that was called a Three Horsemen. And it, it was one of the nastiest shots I've ever taken. And I don't remember anything afterwards. <laughs> So uh, it, I will not do that again. I mean, but but it was it was the the bartender that got us to do it. Sounds like and, a good night. Yeah, <laughs> Belinda was very persuasive. <laughs> I did a one time. I think it was around Christmas time in college. I did a shot at a shot bar in College Station where I went to school. Uh, that was called the We Three Kings, and it tasted like I just shot a Christmas tree, <laughs> uh, which like might kind of sound pleasant, but it really wasn't pleasant to drink. It was better to smell. But anyways, uh, anyway, so let's get back into some serious type questions. You were talking just about younger generations and how people interact with the digital world nowadays a little bit more, like with Amazon and things like that. People are used to going to an app. Um, so how important is it um, when you consider just that younger generations are growing up with this for there to be a product like what Bottle Caps provides for the future of the liquor industry? I think uh, one of the things that we've kind of built into our pitch or when we're trying to explain what we do here is uh, the notion of bricks and clicks which is the combination of the brick-and-mortar stores are still there. Mm -hmm. They're still available. I mean, in any industry, you're still seeing them survive. But we have found that something around 85% of uh, shoppers go onto their phone or go onto the web before they shop in the, uh, the brick-and-mortar space. So whether they're doing research, they're looking through inventory, you still have to have that mixture and you have to have those two dynamics. Then you've got some, we reference Amazon, that – don't leave their home. I mean, mm -hmm. I live down the street, and we get our groceries. We get, um, you know, any you know basic necessities uh, that we need delivered to our front door. Right. So this is an evolution of that. Um, you know, anyone that has grown up with that, it becomes the norm. Uh, and if you don't have to get out of the house or you don't have to make that quote unquote beer run, you know, why not? So I've always said, you know, uh, you either innovate or evaporate, right? And uh, I've also said that if you're not making an app, somebody else is because mm -hmm. it's an app-based world. And for my children, for example, they don't know any better. They don't know what a VCR is. They don't know what a <laughs> cassette is. They don't – I mean I'm lucky they know what an MP3 is, right? Yeah. So it's a world of convenience. And for millennials, it's all about convenience. And what you're also seeing is this whole transformation where you're having a lot more women in the work workplace. Mm -hmm. And alcohol is becoming uh, trendy for women to drink, especially things like whiskey and uh, things that they wouldn't drink in the past, right? So now women want to have that level of convenience at their home. They don't want to walk into a liquor store. And while it's great to be there and engage with the owner of the liquor store, a lot of times they just want the convenience of being home to be able to watch Netflix, order what they want, or you know watch a football game or have a party at their house and pre-order in advance and just have everything delivered. And uh, it's become really revolutionary 
Hmm. And uh, we're the leaders in that space now, and we feel like we are providing a great service. We're also providing a service of, of taking drunk drivers off the road. Yeah. Because as people want to drink, um, some of them will go on the road while they're drinking, and we alleviate that process too. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that just kind of as you were saying that it made me think of was as you were talking about uh, more women drinking and things like that, um, does the app – also help kind of provide some more data for liquor store owners and, and, and people to understand who is drinking what and then you have a better understanding of who your customer is? Yeah, I mean, one of the big pieces of our puzzle is the back-end analytics. So, you know, anytime somebody clicks, anytime somebody scrolls uh, over an inventory item, mm-hmm. this is now registered in our back-end database. Um, so these store owners in an aggregate cap of a format can look at the overall whole of what's being looked at, what's being ordered, I mean, down to the brand specific. We also uh, capture basic information like gender and like what type of device you're using, Android or Apple. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of data that is, that is a piece of this, and we want to arm those liquor store owners with the right information, um, not what they presume to be right from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or generationally, you know, decades ago. Yeah. But – with the right information from the customer today, so. that's smart. So, what is it telling? Uh, just from your perspective, what are you what are you guys learning about the industry and what people are gravitating towards nowadays? As kind of millennials grow into that larger buying demographic uh, with a lot of buying power, um, what are some of the trends that you've been seeing in the industry? One thing that is very big in the industry as a whole right now is you're seeing a lot of these wine companies go to a direct to consumer model. And for us, we are helping the retailer. Mm-hmm. So these direct-to-consumers are a big threat to these retailers. Uh, we can then put the power back in their hands through our technology to go after these millennials because the millennial, again, they're on social media every day. Everything's done on their phone. This direct-to-consumer, well, boom, boom, it's cheap. They take out the middleman, and it's very convenient. So that's one of the big trends, uh, trying to arm these retailers with the power to combat some of this direct-to-consumer. Uh, and what about the inventory? I mean, the inventories have gone com- – we, we've got craft beers and different kinds of yeah. – it's just such a massive amount of inventory now. To try to find what you want, uh, it just m- makes it more convenient to know that your store has it before you, you go there or before you have it delivered. And, and we're such a – you know, we're like a – we're no longer an app company. We are a portfolio. Mm-hmm. So we have started to engage with wine bars, with uh, craft beer sellers, with not only just spirits companies. And then, you know, on the advertising piece, allowing uh, large brands to come and advertise directly to consumers. But doing really innovative things, kind of like what uh, Amazon does in terms of they do their Amazon deals. We do flash sales. Mm-hmm. So we have pop-ups that will literally tell you for the next five minutes you can order Tito's for $10 off a bottle. That really appeals to the millennials. It yeah. really appeals to anybody who wants a deal. And we're able to move a market, we're able to move product, and we're able to get, capture the back-end analytics and really show you know, a return on investment for even a brand and an advertiser mm-hmm. a, in this space. And it's all going digital now. So if you're, if you're sending out paper stuff, you've you're really missed the boat. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing I, I keep thinking of is when I go to a liquor store, I so I love wine. I love red wine specifically. And so I'll go to those aisles, and there's just so many and so much to choose from that an app that has more information on each particular one, and I can say, oh, I like this flavor profile and that mm-hmm. sort of thing and be able to find that is appealing um, because normally when I go to a liquor store, I just – Walk through and say, like, I just had this one, fine, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that sort of thing. But but you're kind of providing something that can actually help make a more informed and better decision. Yeah, so feature based. I mean, the app does a lot of things. There's filters all through the app mm-hmm. where you can you know go direct to what you already know uh, that you like, and then even filter down more specifically. Or you can get you know wild and say, Hey, I want to try something new, and filter out something that you don't know about. There's also ratings in the app. So our users of our technology rate the products. Uh, we also pull ratings from uh, master databases, but they have a star rating and they even have tasting notes. So you can sit here on your phone while you're doing nothing, scroll through and educate yourself mm-hmm. on wine, for example. Um, so it is a tool that's useful from an information standpoint, for sure. I also, I, I would point out that we have recipes, uh, mm-hmm. lots of drink recipes. Yeah. So if people don't know what to get or what to buy, uh, they can pick, figure out a recipe and go, okay, now I know the pieces I need for this. It's it, just helpful and informative to all of our uh, 
customers and users. I mean, we're, we're all, I think, uh, in in some ways, wanting to be bartenders. <laughs> and so, the host with the most. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So having the app arms you with the ability to make any drink you want, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, I've always said that I loved chemistry and love putting things together, and and drinks is one of my favorites, right? And yeah. So I just pull up the app and go, okay, so I want to make this, and I've stuff that I've never made before. Yeah. But I know how to make it now, and all I got to do is click, click, order, and it's it's at my house. You're you're enabling the good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All the party, time. party starts here. <laughs> Everyone likes that guy. Yeah. All right. Should we move into a little bit of trivia? Sure. How do we feel about that? Let's give it a shot. We'll, we'll Test give, these buzzers out. We'll give it a shot. So each of you has a, uh, a particular buzzer that makes a different sound. So, uh, Dr. P, give us your buzzer real quick. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Bish? Yes. And Corey? Perfect. Loving it. All right. So we have three uh, different questions uh, that revolve around three different types of alcohol. Uh, you know what, Dr. P, why don't we let you make the decision for the category? So would you like to go with... A question about gin, a question about bourbon, or a question about beer? I'll do bourbon. Bourbon. Uh, the old-fashioned guy. Yeah, the old-fashioned guy is <laughs> going to choose bourbon. All right. For a whiskey to call itself bourbon, its mash, meaning the mixture of grains from which the product is distilled, must contain at least 51% of this. Yes, Dr. Uh, P. My answer would be corn. That is correct. Oh. That is correct. Well done. Dr. Prashant, crushing it with the corn on the bourbon question. I like right. corn on the cob, too. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking corn with a little bit of bourbon or eating corn with a little bit of bourbon. You know, just yeah. be like doubling the corn intake. All right. Uh, so what's next? Should we go gin or beer? Corey, you're a beer guy. Should we go beer? Let's, let's go beer. All right. What was the highest selling beer in the United States in 2018? I'm yes, going to go with Bud Light. Bud Light is correct. Wow. Bud Light is correct. Nice answer, Wow. Bish. So far, we're two for two. Bish. Yeah. Question that answer. All right. <laughs> For the uh, third and final question, we're going gin. And I, you, we can also go multiple choice with this if we want. Should we go multiple choice? How are we feeling about our gin knowledge? I'm, I'm British, so, uh, you know, oh, so I have a little bit of gin in there. All right. All right. So gin is flavored primarily with berries from this plant. A, juniper, B, nightshade, or C, dogwood. Oh, go ahead, Corey. I want to go Juniper. That is correct. Yep. Three for three, guys. It looks like you're qualified to you know, run, a, run an alcohol. Or qualified to drink alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, maybe that's what it tells drink alcohol. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, let's dive back into some more serious questions just about the industry in general. So when you see uh, – you, you kind of talked about this earlier with websites, just that you see a lot of liquor stores that don't um, – that they have a static website that doesn't do much. It doesn't engage the customer in any way. It just says – hey, we're here and we're a liquor store. What are some other big mistakes that you see people making that you think that you can help with uh, with what you're doing? I think uh, liquor stores really have to jump on the digital revolution. And by that, I mean every piece of it, right? It's, you know, in apps, having the ability to engage customers both in your store and outside your store, the bricks and clicks mentality, the ability to engage them on an e-commerce website, which is similar. We have a website that looks exactly like the app. So for the folks that do not want to get on a phone, um, they can do it on the computer. But one thing we've learned is everybody carries their phone with them. They don't carry their laptop with them. They don't carry their iPad with them. But they always have their phone with them. It's the first thing you see in the morning and the last thing you see at night. And so we know that you know $3.5 billion of alcohol is pushed through the app <coughs> this year alone. I mean, wow. Liquor. Yeah. So we know that this is, this is the future. And it's going to be the future. And I th- we think they were making a mistake because there's 34,000 liquor stores out there right now. And very few of them have a mobile platform. Mm. And so more and more need to jump onto this. And we've made it cost effective to do that because a, a larger player like a Total Wine, it costs them two, $2.5 billion, a million to make an app. A liquor store can't afford that. And we've invested that money and that technology to build a, a lead, class-leading product that will allow them to get into this space and basically engage their customer and keep their customer engaged and buy it all times of the day. I mean, I, I told one liquor store owner recently, I said, you know, while you're sleeping, people can be ordering. Hmm. So you can literally be getting orders like Amazon while you're sleeping. And so, 
you're constantly getting this ability to engage and drive your own business and maintain your customer base because it's a competitive environment. And if one other thing I could add there, um, you know, these these liquor stores, a lot of them are generational. In other words, the grandfather had them, passed it down to mm-hmm. the, the the father have, now has the son, and the, the son is from a different generation, technolo- uh, technologically speaking. They are they are looking for this type. Thing. Now we do come across some business owners or, or, or store owners that say, well, "I've I've always done it this way. Why do I need to change?" And they're learning now; they need to change. Mm-hmm. Or they're they're going to be taken over because they have to compete, right? They have to compete. Yeah, I think information is a big piece that uh, some of these liquor store owners don't quite understand the flow and how it works. Information is so readily available these days, and again, the younger. Uh, folks have had information at their fingertips literally for a very long time uh, mm-hmm. since they can remember. So this is an instant uh, information flow. Uh, we can send push notifications about a new product that just showed up in the store. I haven't even put it on the shelf yet, and now you have the app. You already know that we have this. You know, There's a lot of these seasonal products or yeah. limited quantity products. What we've found, we've done a lot of surveys of our app users, is that that information flow is one of the most important pieces of the whole puzzle. Being able to buy for pickup or delivery is great. Being able to search the inventory is awesome. But knowing you know, firsthand uh, or, or first-to-know knowledge is, is very important. And, and a website simply can't do that. Mm-hmm. They have to go to the website. You can't, you can't just wait for them to. And I'll, I'll take it one further, right? Yeah. So we've, uh, when I say we built the platform, we've also built tools that – Liquor stores can't do themselves, and we built a, uh, you know, a, pro- a product called Bottle Service. And if you think of Bottle Service, think of going to Vegas, right? And you, you're at a nice club, and you get Bottle Service. It's expensive. Mm-hmm. Our Bottle Service is not that expensive, but it's that same level of commitment to the store that we provide all the marketing for them. Corey leads that team and um, basically helps them engage and, and understand how to use this mobile platform because some of them don't know how to do it. And we're teaching them how to do it and how to compete better in this space. As well, some of them just don't understand how to do it. Yeah. Right? They just don't know what to do, so they just leave it. Uh, yeah. Now, we'll let them run their liquor store, what they're good at, and we'll handle their tech. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it takes things off of their plate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that they don't specialize in and lets them specialize in what they're good at. Because a lot of them are mom and pop shops. They're not giant corporations. So we tell them we're your technology partner. Mm -hmm. You know, we and and we you you, your success is our success. Yeah, and we make them very successful, and we've been very good at doing that. Something Corey mentioned, just that constant flow of information, um, is something that I think. Uh, can help create that relationship between consumer and then store, right? Something that I don't know that I've ever had. There's never been one particular store that I always go to. I just go to the place that's most convenient. But if there's a place that I'm getting information from, I feel invested in. I feel like they care about me knowing that they have this special product that they know that I like. That, to me, builds that relationship, Mm -hmm. which I think is important in today's day and age. The the app is more than just the utility. It -hmm. it is the value that it brings. Uh, being connected is a big piece of this puzzle. We tell people the app can help you get new customers, say people that used to shop down the street, but now they can get delivery through your store, Mm -hmm. so they come to you. You just gain the customer. But the app is also built to help you retain uh, your customer. In that era of of information, I can go down the street, I can go online, I can find the cheapest price. Is it always about price? The value, the relationship that you can build with this type of technology allows you to keep your very best customers and, and remain, uh, you know, in contact. And, and we're constantly, you know, uh, Im- you know, improving our technology. We've gone through ver- various iterations of this app. We've enhanced the user experience, the user interface, and now we are very soon to come out with a out-of-the-box solution for all liquor stores that will allow them to do delivery. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to do the delivery. We have partnered with one of the largest uh, delivery firms in the, in the country. And we'll bring a full uh, solution, a similar, a similar concept to what Amazon does. Wow. Um, and, and we want to become the Amazon of liquor. That's pretty impressive. And I think that people, when they think of apps um, kind of coming in and taking over a certain space or working in a particular space, they think that that comes at the expense of the brick-and-mortar location. But that's not kind of the purpose of what you're doing. You're, you're partnering with them. And I think that that uh, is an interesting aspect because you can tell people – 
Um, look, we're not we're not trying to tell you that the brick and mortar location isn't isn't good or isn't still profitable or isn't still yeah. a beneficial business model. It's just let's bring it into the to what's going on now and help you understand how to reach younger generations. One of the big differences of our platform versus some competitors or what we would call third party apps that are out there um, is that we brand it to the liquor store. So we're building the ABC Wine and Liquor Store app. Uh, so it's always branded to them. We, we look at it as it's a virtual store, and then you have your brick-and-mortar store. But it should work hand-in-hand. Hand. The the virtual store should actually bring more people in mm-hmm. uh, if, you're, if you're doing it right or you're using the bottle service methods that we teach. So absolutely, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. And, and it's not just about uh, delivery. We also have pickup options. Uh, they can come into the store and still use the app. They can check out. Different, there's lots of different features based on the store and the rules of that uh, that county or, or that state. Mm-hmm. We turn on and off features as needed. So now, the, one of the other things I wanted to bring up is, you know, one of the, the the real challenges with liquor is, you know, if you've ever wanted to go buy something and you get to a store like a Specs or what have you, and you get to the shelf and they don't have it. Yeah. Right? You don't have that problem with our app because mm-hmm. what we do is we integrate to uh, – we've integrated to over 35 point of sales. By that we mean we take – you have a virtual store like an Amazon. When Amazon goes out of stock, it tells you that. When we go out of stock, we tell you that. But we also, when we run flash sales, the person will not only buy what's in the flash sale. They will be thinking, what else do I need right now? Sure. And they'll put it in the cart and buy it. I need some bitters for my old-fashioned. Yeah, exactly. I just don't need makers. I also need bitters and I also need you know whatever else I need. So uh, it, it, it's really revolutionary and it's really changed the game. For the way liquor stores do business, and the average app, uh, spend on the app is, uh, we found the basket spend go- has gone up versus what people significantly higher, store. probably twenty yeah. percent or more. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's fascinating. Now, how does uh, how do various laws, you know, regulating alcohol in various states make uh, it challenging for you guys? Uh, I know TABC here in Texas. Uh, is one set of rules, and then in another mm-hmm. state, you got another set of rules. So, oh, when you get the government involved, it gets complicated. Um, <laughs> Always, we, we've got a very good team that makes sure that we have the rules for each state down. Mm-hmm. Uh, some states, like for example, Utah, are run by the government, uh, right. similar to Ontario, Canada, and some of the other Canadian provinces, uh, which is a very com- uh, completely different animal than what uh, what we're doing now. Um, I mean, I think it helps. Uh, parts of our team uh, have legal backgrounds. Right. Okay. That so yeah. that certainly is it, uh, our advantage. But uh, you learn quick. I'll put it that way. When you're dealing with as many people on a weekly basis, and when I say people, stores that are out there across the country, you know, they're uh, partners in our education too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know their laws. They've worked there for, for decades. Um, but also, that's another set of expertise that we can lend some of these. A lot of these people trying to move into the technology age, they don't know where – because if you don't know the liquor laws, they're very convoluted for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very gray. <laughs> so when you're moving into a new technology, oftentimes that's where it gets even more gray mm-hmm. because that wasn't intended when they wrote the law, that we would be using a phone to yeah. order booze. Sure. So – we help them through that. Um, you know, we partner with people that know what they need to know, and um, it, again, it's just another piece of the information. And you know, there is a lot of apprehension with uh, folks that have never used technology like mm-hmm. this, right? And so, we've been uh, a, not only a technological partner, but a partner for them to understand their their business in a better way, right? And how how the optics of that business look in a brick and mortar versus in digital. And uh, the more that we get people on board, I mean, we've been now in 40 states and over 325 locations, we're starting to learn that people are embracing it more. And as they go through that journey, they want more, right? I had a store that first just wanted the app. Then they wanted bottle service. Then they wanted the website. Now he's opening a second location because he's like, I'm getting so much business through the app. Why don't I just open another location and do the same thing again? And so they're really learning that digital is the way to go. And these are guys that were very antiquated. Um, But they're jumping on. And once they experience it and see it, it's like uh, having Amazon Prime for the first time ever. (laughs) Once you've done that, you're never going to go back. Right. Because it's it's just a revolutionary change. And it's easier than they think it's going to be. They they, they have a fear of the change, a fear of the technology. And then all of a sudden they do it. And they go, wow, this is easier than I thought. What's the typical integration time? 
30, 30 days. And we, we do all the heavy lifting for the mm-hmm. most part. I mean, we, we've worked with uh, a lot of great point of sale companies. Um, but we also have expertise in this space. So we're able to navigate through some of the challenges, like when Apple came out with five versions of five different phones with different screens, right? We had to be able to navigate that path and be able to, to size all our products to that because you get one phone, it's got to look a certain way. And we want it to look crisp and nice and the, and the interface to be perfect. And so our, we've got a, our, one of our strengths has definitely been our dev team. Uh, they have been tremendous. I mean, we have 18 developers uh, that are just phenomenal. I mean, we ask them to do something, and they figure out how to do it. That's pretty incredible. Uh, okay, last two questions, and they're going to be fun. You ready? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the buzzer questions? <laughs> Not buzzer questions. Oh, okay. We can retire the buzzers for today. I'll I'll political yeah. questions. Are <laughs> <laughs> I'll do one. Everyone retire. had to do it. I, I felt retire. like I was in India doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the, that wasn't purposeful uh anyways so last two questions if you were an alcoholic beverage not not what you like but if you were an alcoholic beverage what would you be so you know someone a little fiery get the fireball or you know nice dependable lager or something like that dr p oh uh so i with you so i i i've gone on record saying that in my next life i'm coming back as a as a Hispanic person, so <laughs> I love I uh, I love margaritas. Okay. So I would be a margarita. I think it's I think it's uh, perfect for any day. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love a margarita? And uh, especially when you have some great Mexican water in it. I mean, it's just amazing. So you're saying you're just like you're just a little tart with some sweet. Yeah. And so, yeah. Sweet with a little bit of tart. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly sweet. My wife might disagree. <laughs> As wives tend to do. Bish, what about you, man? Oh, wow. I was racking my brain here trying to figure out what would I be. I started with thinking maybe I'd be a beer, then I said that maybe a light beer, and I said, no, I'm not light enough for that. <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I think about it, I think I'm going to be a champagne. A Ooh. nice uh, popping bottles in a bar. This is my, you know, the lifestyle that I used to live before I got married and had some kids. <laughs> uh, you know, going to Vegas, having a good old time, maybe a Cristal or a. Or a Dom oh, Perignon or something. How about that? Bish is fancy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah um, cool. I guess my answer, uh, obviously, you, you don't have the visual, but I wear a pretty large beard. You do. And yes. uh, the craft beer space is definitely blown up. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, it seems you have to have a beard to, to enjoy <laughs> craft beer. It's why I don't work in that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, can't, I, can't actually I think I would, yeah, I, would, I would become a brewer in another life, <laughs> and I would, uh, I would be a craft beer in another life. So. Yeah? Would you, what, what would you be? You know, would you be like a, a porter? I'd probably you know, go like IPA, a, man. Okay. Go all the yeah. way if you're going to go. Yeah, sure. Uh, very hoppy and, and, and take it the distance. Corey's getting to uh, James Harden status. He is getting to James Harden status. Fear the beard. Yeah. Yeah. We're, oh, <laughs> I, I do fear that beard. Yeah. <laughs> Final question. So you're in an Uber on your way home from you know a night out with, with your buddies and that sort of thing, and you see a particular fast food restaurant passing by on your right. What restaurant makes you tell the Uber driver, stop, I have to, have, I have to get that? I'm, I'm going home. Jack in the Box. <laughs> you can get just about anything there. It's amazing. Their menu is so diverse. And if you feel like tacos or you feel like burgers or you feel like eggs, they've got everything. Oh my so goodness. I'll say uh, Bish is a French fry snob. So I mean, when he says Jack the Box, that is a uh, obviously a, a positive for them. But right. mine would be we're local, regional here in Texas, Whataburger. I knew it. Uh, Someone had to say it. If, if you're listening from somewhere else, get down to Texas. When you're visiting in Texas, go get you a Whataburger. This place, uh, it changes lives. So it, it would be a, a definite Whataburger for me. I am a, uh, a Chick-fil-A snob uh, on record. So uh, I, if I saw a Chick-fil-A, I tell them to stop every time. What's your Chick-fil-A order? Is it nuggets? Uh, it's the spicy chicken sandwich Ooh. deluxe. Yeah. I love it. Um, I would eat it every day <laughs> if, if I didn't have to exercise to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Bish, where did the uh, Chick-fil-A fries rank in the world of uh, – Oh, I love the Chick-fil-A fries. Those waffle, waffle fries, right? Those waffle fries are fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, he's right. I will. I don't even order my own fries anymore because I'm reaching around eating everybody else's and uh, eating my <laughs> own. Yeah, just reaching around. Every, I get some of here, some of yours, some of yours. So yeah, it's it's. I don't know what it is. Maybe 
My 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 son's the same way. He just loves yeah. French fries. So you lived in Canada for a little bit. So yeah. like, is poutine like a, a is that a staple? Poutine is unbelievable. And yeah. in fact, I'll tell you a funny story um, real quick here. Uh, when I took my wife to Canada, mm-hmm. and I grew up there, and and I, we went to a I think it was a Dairy Queen or something. It was, it was a fast food restaurant, and I was ordering poutine from this. My probably 14, 16 year old girl behind the counter who's doing the cash register. I was like, yeah, get me the poutine. And my wife just looks at me like, what are you saying to this girl? I'm like, honey, poutine is not what you think it is. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, she loved it too uh, after that. That is fantastic. That feels like an appropriate place to wrap up this episode of Popping Bottles with so. Bottlecast. Yep. I think so. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, coming to the Market Scale studio today and for uh, having a chat with me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.